day the sun is shining outside. Um, so this morning we are going to discuss one of the Academy's four core values. So today we are looking at being big hearted and what this actually means. We're going to explore what it means to be big hearted and how we can all create more opportunities for kindness and compassion in our lives, especially during the strange time that we've been living in. Um, I'm happy to be joined by Mr. McPaul for the assembly today, so he will be speaking at different moments across the next 40 minutes. So, um, according to actionforhappiness.org, recent research into brain functioning has confirmed that we are hardwired for love and compassion. It's a fundamental part of our being. So it's not all about chasing individual success. We do care about our communities and society flourishes it improves and it gets better when we all look out for each other. Scientific evidence has proven that kindness changes the brain and it impacts our heart and our immune system. And it may even be an antidote to depression. So sometimes when you're feeling down, it's really positive to think about kind of the more positive aspects in life, kindness, compassion, generosity. We are actually genetic, genetically wired to be kind. That is our fundamental principle within our beings. When we are kind to people, we know that it strengthens, strengthens our connections with them and it provides a source of support. Research shows that we may benefit from giving support, support more than actually receiving it. And we are more likely to get uh, support in return when we actually need it. So if we throw a support out there, if we throw kind words out there, we're actually like, likely to get it back twofold, just as much. This may not be like for like, you may not get it from the same person, but actually being kind to others continually and as often as possible builds a wider support network, which increases everyone's well-being in every aspect. So think about school as a community as well. So being kind and spreading kindness and compassion just makes the school a better and happier and more positive place. Being kind things for others helps build cooperation, trust and create a sense of safety in our community. It helps us to see others and life more positively and it help, helps us to empathise with others as well, to understand and try and put ourselves into their shoes. These are the foundations of a local thriving community, our school and a flourishing place, a flourishing society, okay? One that continues to develop and focus on well-being. Um, we should be on slide four now, if possible, please. So we're going to look at what counts as kindness and you should see a quotation there. Do things for people, not because of who they are or what they do in return, but because of who you are. Being kind is a lot more about you than the person you're aiming your kindness at. We all want to be known as good, fundamentally kind people. So what can we do to be kind? Being big hearted can show itself as kindness, as compassion, as generosity or benevolence. And it can be as simple as a smile, a thank you, or a word of encouragement. We all love a compliment. We all love positive, positive praise in our lives. It's a way of connecting, even if for a brief moment on day, and with those who we pass by in our daily lives. Now, being kind doesn't have to cost us anything, or it doesn't have to take up much of our time. But what is important, that it is a genuine act of care and thoughtfulness for another person, whether they are close to you or not, a relative stranger sometimes. Kind acts can be spur of the moment. You just do them suddenly. And it's like when we notice someone in need. For example, we might give up our seat on the train to someone or pick up or return someone's glove if they drop it. Small opportunities like that pop up all over the place. Like, for example, holding the door open for someone in school, saying please or thank you, paying someone a compliment, or even making a drink for someone at home without, the, without you being asked. Little acts of kindness can go a long way to generating a much more positive and kind of a healthy mood in our societies. Now, keep in mind that societies could be the home, could be school, it could be the wider area that you live in. Kind acts don't always have to be spur of the moment, though. They could be thought out in advance. You could plan to do something for a friend or a neighbour or a loved one. It could be because it's their birthday or an anniversary coming up. Or maybe it's because you just want to spread a little bit of joy in their life. If you might notice that they're feeling a bit down or they're not as happy as usual, you might plan to do something nice for them. There are unlimited ways to be kind to others. We only need to keep our eyes open 
and pay attention to those around us to see the opportunities that we can help them. Be kind, it's important for us to be aware of the people around us. We need to take notice of their take notice of their needs and their feelings. We all have an innate, uh, an, in, an innate compassion within us, but sometimes it takes us a little bit longer to tune into it. The Dalai Lama has said, be kind whenever possible, and it's always possible. So it's always possible to find kindness in any moment. So I wanted to think about what being big hearted meant to me as a person. So how do I try to be big hearted or how how do I feel when someone acts kindly towards myself? And for me, it's about the simple things. It's a text or a phone call to check in. So if my friends notice I've been a bit quiet, they just drop me a text. OK, or if I notice something's different, I call them up. I absolutely love it when doors are held open for me in corridors, especially if I'm struggling with loads of book, books or bags. It's really great if someone notices and just makes life a little bit easier for me on that, that few seconds. Sometimes it's an offer of help. Miss, can I help you? Or can I carry that? Or can I get something for you? I think it's really important to notice our friends or our family and how people are changing, especially across the past year and with kind of the current changes coming up. And we can do that through noticing their tone of voice or maybe their lack of tone, their lack of engagement in our text conversations. Maybe their lack of contact with us. They've actually gone a little bit quiet over the last few days. Or even simply their facial inspections. Now, I know that people can tell how I feel because I, I show it on my face. So you, it's really easy to notice if I'm in a good mood or if I'm angry or I'm a bit sad. But not everyone's like that. So we have to be able to pick out on, on their face expressions and the clues to help us know when to we, we can be kind. I'm now going to hand over to Mr McPaul. who will explore how we can all be more emotionally intelligent to allow us all to continue to be kind and big hearted to those around us. Mr McPaul. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Collier. And I'm very, very happy to be here today. This is part of the school ethos, which is... Um, Literally, figuratively, very close to my heart. I think this is a great part of this school ethos. Being big hearted, and this is uh, what being big hearted means to me. It means to have empathy, to read the emotions of others, and to seek to create a harmonious atmosphere filled with positive compliments. And after all, who doesn't like a compliment? Okay, well, I can remember being um, a student at school and getting praise from teachers and really enjoying that. Likewise, as an adult, if a colleague or someone like a line manager says, you know what, this, Mr. Matt Paul, this was really good, that really makes my day so much better. Okay, so I like to um, act in these ways too. Okay, if we could go, go on to the next slide, that would be, uh, be great. Thank you. So what is emotional intelligence? We have a definition if we just press, uh, if we do one more click, thank you uh, to my great assistant there. So <clears throat> there is a definition on this slide, if we just do one more click, it should uh, it should come up. Thank you. There we go. Brilliant. It's the capacity to be aware of, control, and express one's emotions to handle interpersonal relationships. It says judiciously, so that's fairly, and empathetically to feel what someone else feels, to be able to read people. Now, there's a lot that has been said historically about IQ, okay? But EQ emotional intelligence is now deemed to be even more important in a in our success in later life so if we could go on to the next slide thank you what we're going to do we're going to have a little quiz so looking at this facial expression and i'll just give you 30 seconds to have a good look what do you think this lady is feeling here what do you think she's expressing do you think she's expressing embarrassment do you think she's expressing fear Sadness or surprise? Have a good look. And I'm going to have a little a timer <laughs> just to make sure that you, you can see enough there. Okay. Um, uh, just let me get the timer on. So I think this one will be enough, but there we go. Okay. So if we can reveal the answer, da, 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 da. Thank you. It is actually fear. So if you think about when the fear, okay, your eyebrows raise, your eyes tighten, your mouth widens. Okay. So these are little um facial cues across all different cultures and this is what's interesting about these expressions these expressions are universal across different these body language expressions for these these emotions um if we go on to the next slide thank you so what is this face expressing is it expressing flirtatiousness is it expressing interest 
Is it expressing happiness or is it expressing politeness? What do you think? I'm going to give you another 15 seconds. Just have a really good look at that face. Have a good think about it. Cognize what you're seeing and make your evaluation. Okay. If we go into the next slide now. Thank you. Of course, it's happiness. And happiness comes from a smile in the mouth and the eyes. Okay. So a fake smile doesn't involve the eyes. A real smile comes to the, the eyes should crease a little bit. And uh, as I'm getting older, my crow's feet are increasing. Anyway, if we can just continue, thank you. Aha. I think this one, this one may be a little bit easier for you to guess what you're reading there. So looking at this gentleman's face and looking at his eyebrows and his eyes, his mouth, what emotion do you think he's expressing? Do you think he's expressing sadness? Do you think he's expressing pain? Do you think he's expressing anger? Or do you think he's expressing disgust? I'm just going to give you another five seconds. Okay, and if we can reveal, thank you. It is, of course, anger. Now, quite an important um, emotion to be able to register um, so you can avoid uh, conflict. But um, if someone's angry, obviously a frown, and their mouth can tighten as well. Okay, their lips can purse. Yeah. So it's important uh, to recognize that very uh, primal emotion there. Okay, reading of rooms are important. Next, uh, next slide, thank you. Now, this one, this one I found a little bit more challenging when I was going through this quiz myself. So what expression do you think this gentleman is expressing? Do you think it's embarrassment? Do you think it's sadness? Do you think it's amusement? Or do you think it is shame? Okay, so I'm going to give you another five seconds looking at this. Five, four, three, two, one. And the big reveal. Thank you. It's embarrassment. And when you're embarrassed, you often put your head to the side and try to avoid someone's gaze. You may smile out of embarrassment because that's a little bit of anxiety actually coming out. OK, when you get a question wrong or when you say something that may be a little bit incorrect and you're rebuked and you might be, you know, there are different reasons for being embarrassed. But that is how someone shows embarrassment. They try to avoid eye contact and put their head down and look at the floor. OK, they may smile at the same time. This is another key thing to remember because we shouldn't really seek to embarrass others. That isn't being big hearted, isn't part of the Bexley Heath Academy school ethos. Thank you for going to the next slide now. This one, now this one's uh, this one was quite challenging, I think. So what do you think this face is expressing here, this lady? Do you think that she is expressing pride? Do you think that she is expressing contempt? Do you think... That she is expressing excitement, or do you think that she's expressing anger? Look carefully. Look how she's elevated her chin there. That is a key giveaway, I think. I hope I haven't uh, given too much away. So five, four, three, two, one. Next slide, thank you. It is pride. When you feel a sense of pride, you feel aloof, okay? So you raise your head, okay? It's supposed to denote a sense of superiority. So I'd be careful not to show too much pride on a daily basis. Obviously, if you get a uh, a question right in class, you can hold, hold your head up high. Just don't do it for too long, I'd say. Okay, so um, next slide. Thank you. Now, I think this one's a little bit easier. Okay, I think the one's a little bit easier. I think we can all get this one. Okay, so... This face is expressing, is it expressing fear? Is it expressing interest? Is it expressing surprise? Or is it expressing compassion? I'm going to give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and reveal. It's, of course, surprise, because when you're surprised, your eyes open wide. And you must have heard of the phrase, jaw dropping. Your jaw drops to the ground. So this is a classic sign of surprise, one of the easier emotions to recognize. And we're going to move on to our final slide for this thinking activity. And after that, we'll be moving back on to Miss Conia, just so we give our assistant here all the um, advanced 
um, notice that he requires. Okay, so this face here, is it expressing sadness, shame, disgust, or contempt? What do you think? Sadness, shame, disgust, or contempt? Five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. It is contempt. So when you feel content to someone, you often look away because you're not happy with what you have just seen. Okay, in that person. Also, your facial muscles tighten out of a stress response. Now, recognizing people's facial expressions is a key skill for life. Okay, it's very important in teaching. It's very important in general life to recognize how people feel and to react to that in a big hearted and positive way. The more harmony we have in life, the more enjoyable life is. And that's the culture and ethos that we want to create at Bexley Heath Academy. I'd now like to hand over to Mrs. Collier. So if we could do that, that would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. McPaul. And I think that was a really important, just a little experiment, just because we need to be recognising, as Mr. Paul said, the cues that other people give us. So if someone is embarrassed, if someone's feeling angry, they're the people that might need our kindness or our compassion. We might need to be more big hearted towards them. So we need to start learning how to read the situation or read people's expressions to allow us to find those moments for kindness and compassion, because they are all around us all of the time. We just need to seek them and find them. Now, this year has been a really difficult year for everybody, but a really beautiful thing has shone through across this year, and it has been the power of kindness, whether it be big or small. At the beginning of the pandemic in March last year, the family of 88-year-old Daryl Blackley asked people to carry out acts of kindness in his memory. And if we could move on to the next slide, please. Um, so, they asked people to carry out acts of kindness in his memory. His family wrote, we invite you to forget flowers and cards. Instead, we would like you like to give you acts of kindness. Help someone who is lonely or struggling during this time, who needs shopping, childcare or chat. This legacy of kindness has echoed throughout the whole year of lockdown. Now, I know that in my area, in particular where I live, people are volunteering across the, the first lockdown in particular to call people to have a chat with um, so maybe some elderly some vulnerable people in society so I think it's a really great idea just to encourage others to use their time on kindness and compassion next slide please we're now going to speak about Holly who was a florist from Doris, um, Dorset um, and has been, had been leaving hidden flower arrangements across the location to cheer people up during lockdown now, that's such an amazing thing to use his skill and his talent to help and cheer other people up. Is that something that you could do that we could think about doing? Posting pictures around school for people to find different things that might cheer someone up. And a smile to make the difference to someone's day. Next slide, please. When the whole apartment building was locked down in Spain, a fitness instructor conducted um, fitness classes from the roof to boost the morale and the spirits of residents. Now imagine seeing that and being able to take part in that. We all know that fitness and a healthy lifestyle continually boosts our positive um, as aspect and our good mental health. That's such an amazing thing to see that a whole community came together. Next slide, please. Now we all know this one quite personally, um, but children and adults across the country painted pictures of rainbows to place in their windows across the first lockdown. And Manchester in particular held a great um, a, a great big art exhibition to brighten up people's days. Now, I really enjoyed when I used to go walk, take my dog for a walk during the first lockdown, was seeing all of the beautiful pictures of rainbows. People had painted them on the sides of their houses, um, pictures and windows on the pavements, and they still exist to this day. And I think it's such an easy gesture, but actually it did bring a smile to my face. So if you see any rainbows as you're walking around, it will still make you smile and remember the positive message, message that we were all trying to kind of achieve at the difficult time. Next picture, please. There are so many acts of kindness which have changed people's lives. So in 2015, so before the pandemic, 80 school friends and teachers shaved their heads in solidarity with a nine-year-old Marley who suffered from a rare form of tissue cancer. 
Now, obviously, we're not encouraging people to do that necessarily, but it just shows solidarity. It showed, look at the pictures and the faces, that during such a testing time, people were happy. They were supporting each other. Now, these are some extreme examples, but it just shows how much positive and kindness there is out there. Next slide, please. In 2014, so again before the uh, pandemic, a man tripped and became trapped when on the tra uh, between the train and a platform. It must have been incredibly terrifying to see and to go through. As the man tried to free himself, CCTV uh, footage captured the moment when hundreds of fellow commuters worked together to push the train and to free the man. Now, just look at that picture for a second. Take it in. Just how, when we all come together, we can achieve something amazing. Now, this is an extreme example, but in class, we can work together. In the community, we can work together. We always do better with the support and help of others. And that's that's just a kind of a life fact, as it were, that working in isolation is not always going to be successful. So there's just a few stories of how people have spread positivity and how they've shown how to be big hearted in some quite extreme conditions. Small acts of kindness can go such a long way and everybody coming together will help it, help one person or community. Um, Mr. McPaul is now going to go through some examples of how we can all spread kindness and how we can all be big hearted. So Mr. McPaul. Thank you. Being big hearted, one of the, one of the great um, parts of the Bexif Academy ethos. And by the way, thank you for those... Uh, slides that was really interesting and that power of teamwork well that's just so amazing so if we just move on to the next slide thank you that would be great thank you so um we were discussing how we could increase uh this uh this school ethos of being big hearted across the academy and from free week three what we're going to do is introduce a digital kindness box now i think this is a really really great idea to be big hearted so in this digital kindness box, you can write down something that someone, it can be a student, it could be a teacher, it could be a member of SLT, it could be a member of backroom staff, i.e. the pastoral managers as well. It could be literally anyone in the Bexley Heath Academy community. And you could write something down which they've done, which has just made your week better or your day better, just to increase and enhance this um, positivity this culture of positivity that we want to embrace at Bexley Heath Academy. I think this is a really great idea. And I know if someone wrote something down about me and something that I'd done, that would really make my week. So it's just a way to reflect on positivity. And, you know, if you reflect on positivity, you, you're going to increase it. So I think this is a really mentally healthy thing to do. It's good for mental well-being. OK, um, if we could just move on to the next slide as well. Thank you. Thank you. So be big hearted to yourself. So you might have heard the phrase charity starts at home. Well, kindness can actually be extended to yourself. And it's something that you should you should remember. OK, um, because if you know, if you're feeling well in yourself, you're much more likely to be kinder to other people, aren't you? So I just want to give you an example um, from my own life. So whew, a good 10 years ago now, when I was traveling through the Middle East, um, I was I was teaching in um, Saudi Arabia, in the deserts of Saudi Arabia, and I made some friends with these Dutch psychologists uh, guys, and we we went out to the desert, and it was just absolutely beautiful. I can't explain to you. You might have seen the desert in a film, but when you actually see it with your own eyes, it's just it's just amazing. I was just like, wow, this is really beautiful. And I said the words, I am happy. I said, I'm happy. I'm happy in this moment. And these Dutch psychologists, what they said to me was that it was a very good habit for mental well-being. You should always identify when you feel happy, express it, and that'll be infectious to others. So I'd like to um, encourage you to do that. And, you know, what makes us happy? Well, being around enthusiastic and positive people. Be kind to yourself as well as others. Unwind. Have a cup of tea. Okay? Eat your favourite meals. Do the little things and treat yourself. And when you're in a good mood for doing all that, you're much more likely to be generous, kind, and think of others. So I think this would be something great for us to do. One, to have that digital kindness box. And two, to be kinder to ourselves. Don't be so hard on ourselves. So I'd now like to hand over to Mrs. Collier, thank you, after saying that. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. And I just wanted to drop a reminder there. Across the last few months, January and February, you have been focusing on being positive and focusing on good mental health. 
Every day in assemblies, you've been given a new challenge or a new action. It encourages positivity and encourages good mental health in yourself. Whether it's taking a virtual tour, whether it's making a cup of tea, whether it's trying a new sport, um, whether it's just going out for your daily exercise, looking at the nature around you. There's so much that we can do that is free that is at our fingertips to encourage kindness and positivity. So the assembly is drawing to close in, in, in a, about 10 minutes time, but we now need to start focusing on us. And Mr. McPaul said it perfectly, that we can be kind to ourselves as well. And across previous assemblies, uh, across this year, we've discussed the importance of recognising the benefits of having a good mental health. And that is how we can be big hearted and kind to ourselves as well. It's so easy in, in life um, to kind of focus on the negative, to focus on things that we've done wrong, to focus on that, that one sad or angry emotion. But as Mr. McPaul said, and I think it's so valuable that you recognise the moment you are happy and you focus on the positives, the one thing you've done really well today, the one thing you're proud of. And if you are happy, you then will infect others around you with your happiness and your positivity. OK, so kindness starts with ourselves. Now, we as, academy, as an academy have been given a fantastic opportunity to work with and support a project called Me Too. If you could show those sli that slide for me, please. OK, now it's a mental health support group. It works with young people up to 21 year olds. And basically it's an app that is aimed at young people just like you. OK, the app allows you to reach confidential support outside of school and home. It is with adults, trained professionals. And if you are struggling, if you are, if you have a moment of doubt, if you just want to reach out and talk to someone, this app will allow you to do that. And it's safe and it's confidential and it's a really good source of help or advice or support should you need it. Now, the project have asked for you to take part in their research project, which will allow them to focus on how they can improve the support that they are offering young people. Now, all you need to do is to download the Me Too app. Now, keep in mind that they've recently just changed their name, which is not particularly helpful. So it could be me, M-E-E-T-O-O, -E -E or you may find it as M-E-E-T-W-O. But when I searched yesterday, it came up as the words on the screen that you can see now. So you have to download the app, um, and then it's free to sign up, and you take part in the survey. And the survey is all about focusing on how you, someone your age, can be supported better. So it's a great opportunity to be a part of change. And once you've completed the survey, you are able to access any support should you need it. Now, I'm going to ask um, for a short video to be watched and played to give you some instructions. Hi, I'm Joe and I work for the Mental Health app, Me Too. We're currently conducting a research project with the Anna Freud Centre, who are leaders in the field of youth mental health research, and we need your help. As many of you might be aware, youth mental health is being spoken about now more than ever before, and that's because research has shown that mental illness develops in people from a young age. Young people find it quite hard to talk about their problems, whether it be to a teacher, friend or family member. And because of this, 70 percent of young people never get treated for their mental illness. We at Me Too are trying to do something to change this, um, but we've got to the stage where we need input from young people like yourselves. In 2017, we launched the Me Too app, which makes it easy for young people to talk about difficult things. It's currently used by 45,000 people. And on the app, you can post about literally anything, whether it be a problem at school or something going on in your family. And you'll receive support from other users who are similar age to you and have been through maybe, maybe similar things. The app is anonymous, confidential, and it's moderated by humans, meaning that it's completely safe. As part of the research project, we need you to download the Me Too app. So on the screen, you'll see instructions of how to download the app and create your profile. So why don't you take this moment to pause the video, complete these steps, and press play once you've got your account. Now you have your Me Too account, the first thing we need you to do is complete a short five minute survey. You can find this in the directory section of the app, which you can go to by clicking the middle icon at the bottom of your screen. Once clicked through to the directory at the top section called Get Support, you'll see a little button that says Me Too Needs You. 
If you click through to here, it will give you some information about the survey and you'll see a little yellow speech bubble where you can click through to begin filling it out. After you've completed the survey, the next thing we need you to do is to spend some time using Me Too. Part of the research project involves receiving feedback from students about how they feel about the app. So we'll get in contact again in a couple of months time um, and ask you to complete another survey then. The research project is really important. And if you know anyone from family or friends that experience mental health issues, then this could go a long way to providing extra support for them in the future. So with that in mind, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me and for the support in the project. Thank you very much. It was a short video, but if you do need any steps, then please don't hesitate to kind of get in contact with me and I can talk you through the steps so I can send you the video to watch yourself. Now, kindness starts at home, as we've already discovered, but we now need to think about how we can be big hearted with each other. So my challenge to you today is how can you be kind towards yourself or someone else? What one kind action can you complete that will bring a smile to your face or just someone else's face? I'd like to challenge you to text someone, to call someone, to FaceTime or video call someone that you haven't spoken to for a couple of weeks. Maybe who are you excited about seeing in a couple of weeks' time when we all come back to school together? Maybe you've missed someone. Reach out. Tell them that you've missed them. Tell them you care. If you haven't heard from someone in a little while, reach out. Or go downstairs and make someone a cup of tea. Okay, make someone a drink. Or offer to make lunch. Kindness and being big-hearted can be really simple, small steps. But it's the impact we have on others that has the long-lasting effect. Now, I heard something the other day that I thought was really interesting. So it's quite common for us all to ask someone if they're okay. So are you okay? And we all say yes, absolutely yes. It's our first answer as an instinct. But actually, we're not always okay. So what I'm going to start doing from now on is I'm going to ask people twice if they're okay. First time, I'll expect the response. Second time, that's when they might actually think, oh, they really do care. She, she's asking for a reason. Because it's such a, an instinctive thing just to say, are you okay? And then just move on with the conversation or carry on walking down the corridor. So we really need to start checking in with each other. So ask twice, are you okay? No, are you really okay? And then someone might open up. They might ask for help. They might reach out. They might tell you what's bothering them. And then a problem, a problem shared is a problem halved. And we can all work together to be kindness and be carted towards each other. So I'm going to draw the assembly to a close now, just for our normal final reminders. Okay, these are our normal safety messages. So we are still reminding you to stay at home. We are still encouraging you and reminding you to attend every single lesson and to continue working really hard. Your virtual engagement scores have been dramatically improving. So it's really noticing how hard you're working at home. Now that the weather is nice and the sun is shining today, at least, do keep a window open, especially if there's more than one of you in a particular room so fresh air can circulate. Always remember to keep washing your hands. If you come into contact with anyone else or pets around the house, wash your hands or continue to use a hand sanitizer regularly. And if you do need to head out, remember to keep a distance from everyone else. It's two metres still. Always wear your face covering if you come into contact with everyone. And remember to go out for your one daily dose of exercise out in this fresh air at break or lunchtime or after school. Take care, stay safe, and we look forward to seeing you shortly. Remember to be big-hearted to everyone, including yourself. Thank you very much. <laughs>